Hey guys, Hitman89 here. I hope you're doing great. Last week, we had the best single player games. Check out the video if you're interested. And today, we're gonna be looking at the 15 best PC games of 2024, the first half. And before we get started, I'm really excited to let you guys know that I partnered with Instant Gaming, the best place to get your favorite games at the best prices. Seriously, the prices are so good. Instead of just getting a game from Steam or the PlayStation Store, you could get two games on Instant Gaming. For example, you can have both Ghost of Tsushima and V Ryzen for just 60 bucks. Instant gaming is 100% legit. All the games come straight from the authorized resellers. So go ahead and use the link in the description and get yourself one or two games for super cheap. It's a direct way to support the channel and an excellent way for you to save money on your favorite games. Now let's have a look at the first game on my list. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut looks insanely good on PC. Riding your horse while watching the beautiful sunset will make you forget your village got invaded by the Mongols and almost everyone you know is dead. You can challenge enemies to a standoff, just don't let go of triangle too soon or these guys will slice you up like a carrot in a mongol salad. Keep in mind, if you suck at fighting and have no honor, you can rely on stealth to silently take everyone out. Next, we have a realistic medieval strategy game. Manor Lords is a city builder, but there is some combat every now and then. I like how soldiers and workers don't just magically spawn out of buildings, they're the same people that live in your village. You also have to make those little bitches craft enough weapons and armors, so you can rally an army and watch it get crushed by the enemy like mine did here. Next, we have a survival game, and don't worry, even if that's not your cup of tea, you might actually end up like in V-Ryzen. Why? Because what makes this one unique is the fact you play a vampire, so fighting in broad daylight is a horrible idea. You'll also have to feed on people, preferably the ones with high quality blood, to get the best buffs. V-Ryzen's got tons of challenging boss fights if you're under level, which my brother and I were most of the time, so we died a lot and we kept on blaming each other instead of just upgrading our gear because that's how we level up in this game. Now when it comes to the combat system, it's kind of a Diablo-like except it's much better, at least in my opinion. Speaking of which, I think we can all agree Diablo 4 died out pretty quickly, so if you want a much better alternative, Try out Last Epoch. It's fun and deep with super flexible gameplay mechanics that allow you to easily respect your character so you can try out all kinds of skills and playstyles. At number 5 we have another isometric game. And I know what most of you guys are thinking. What the fuck? Hear me out. The Thaumaturge is a story driven RPG where you play as a Thaumaturge. You look for clues, investigate places and people, and most importantly, you can see demons and even tame them and use them inside and outside of battle. Definitely give this underrated game a shot if you don't mind the turn-based combat system. Next, we have a DLC, a big one, Shadow of the Earth Tree. Not gonna lie, I still haven't made that much progress yet, cause I've been exploring a lot and also getting my ass kicked left and right. Seriously, I got my ass kicked by this guy, this giant asshole, and this piece of shit, until I started using my Shadow Realm blessings. So if you're struggling, make sure to collect those Shadow Tree blessings and you'll have a blast. This DLC is so big, it could have easily been its own game. So if you like Elden Ring, definitely pick up Shadow of the Earth Tree. Now at number 7, we have a game I'm sure most of you haven't heard of. Bellrite is a medieval survival game where you get to recruit villagers to build your own settlement, grow it, and even raise an entire army. But before you get there, you're gonna have to chop down trees gather all kinds of herbs and hunt animals to provide your village with enough food to survive the winter. The combat system will definitely remind you of Mountain Blade, so I miss 69% of my hits and whenever I have to fight two or more guys at once, those motherfuckers spam the same attacks until my shield breaks and I die like a piece of shit. If like me, you enjoy slow paced medieval games where you get to tell people what to do, you'll get addicted to Bellrite. Keep in mind this is an early access game, so it's not optimized and there's barely any voice acting, it's mostly AI voices. At least you can now practice with your friends before you get your ass kicked by those bandits. Moving on to the next game, Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition finally landed on PC a couple of months ago and it's even more beautiful than the already stunning PS5 version. 
I like how they made melee a viable option, cause I'm not really a fan of the whole bow and arrow stuff, I don't like ranged combat that much, and I don't enjoy fighting robots either. I'm gonna keep it 100, the only reason I play Horizon is cause I'm a graphics whore. At number 9 we have another open world game, except Enshrouded has a voxel based world. So you can dig holes, destroy almost everything, and build some really cool looking stuff. You don't have to do that on your own though, cause Enshrouded supports up to 16 players in co-op. I played it with my brother, and even though there's no friendly fire, I still found a way to kill him by shooting those explosive barrels every time he walks by one. Now what made me love Enshrouded is that, apart from being a survival game, it's also an open world RPG where you can gain XP by fighting, mining, exploring and completing quests. If you have a decent PC, I highly recommend Enshrouded. Another game I highly recommend, especially if you like online co-op shooters, is Helldivers 2. It's basically what the Starship Troopers game should have been, but with friendly fire, so almost every time you throw a grenade, you turn your friends into a lasagna explosion. Apart from the giant alien bugs you'll be fighting, there are tons of robots. If you haven't tried Helldivers 2 yet, you're missing out. Next, we have another game where you'll be fighting a bunch of machines. I found Terminator Dark Fate Defiance's campaign really interesting, even though when it comes to strategy games, I'm more of a skirmish guy. The voice acting is pretty good and the physics and destruction animations are great. So whenever I see a bunch of enemies hiding inside the building, I blast those fools with tanks and RPGs just to watch the explosions and also to terminate those terminators. At number 12 we have Hades 2, which really doesn't feel like an early access game. It's got no ending yet, but everything else feels polished and complete. If you played the first Hades game, then you know what Hades 2 is about. But if for some reason you never heard of Hades, Google it. Okay, it's a roguelite, so every time you die you have to start over, but you get to unlock some permanent buffs that'll hopefully help you do better on your next run. Now, the 13th game I want to show you is for those of you who like anime and JRPGs and are tired of huge open world games. Cause Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is a linear JRPG with a dynamic and fun combat system. Linking attacks with your teammates charges your link bar faster, and when everybody's link bar reaches 100%, you can unleash a big special attack. Almost as big as these boobies. At number 14, I was gonna have no rest for the wicked, but it still needs a lot of work, so instead, I went with Sons of the Forest. Even if you played the first one, you'll still die 69 times during the first couple of hours until you figure it out or uninstall and refund the game. In all seriousness though, I really like the manual building system. Too bad I can't build shit properly cause I'm constantly getting attacked by these cannibals. Last but not least, if you like exploring a huge, ruthless world on foot where you can get ambushed by giant monsters, then you have to play Dragon's Dogma 2. It runs like shit on all platforms, but at least, now that it's got better DLSS and frame generation support on PC, hopefully if you have a decent GPU, you'll finally be able to run the game properly. By the way, optimization is the only thing I didn't like. Other than that, I had a blast beating Dragon's Dogma 2 and it's still my favorite game of the year so far. Let's be honest, any game that lets me grab my companions and throw them around is automatically my goatee candidate. And that's gonna be it for the best PC games of 2024 so far. I hope you found this video helpful. Oh, and another game you might want to check out if you want the best graphics ever and you don't mind the game being way too linear and simple, play Hellblade 2 through Game Pass. That's what I did. Please don't forget to support the channel with a thumbs up, or even better, click the link in the description and get yourself a couple of games for cheap. Thank you for the support. It's been Hitman89. See you guys very soon. I will not stop. I am prepared to get to the top. There you must be. Where? Got a bike. Hey.